Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, October 9th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Marissa Mayer is still making headlines as Yahoo's newest CEO. Is she a good fit for the job? Also, will HP bow to analyst pressure for an internal breakup? Joining us now is SiliconANGLE founder John Furrier to give us his breaking analysis on these stories. Welcome, John. How are you doing? So 12 weeks ago, she became CEO and is Yahoo's fifth CEO in four years. She's no doubt the highest profile CEO to hire uh, since the days when Jerry Yang was in charge. But the question is whether she'll be able to last longer than her predecessors. So what's your angle on all of this? I think it's great for Yahoo. I, I think Marissa Mayer is awesome. Uh, love, love her style. The fact that she uh, has such a great history with Google, uh, being one of the early employees, first female engineer. You know, she has particular quirks about her style that kind of have a Google feel to it. So I think she's going to bring that to Yahoo. I don't think she's the most experienced to, to come to the table in terms of management style. And she wasn't known um, at Google as having been the most consummate manager. But Yahoo's got plenty of people who know how to move paper around middle management. And they got to get rid of more of those and bring in more of Marissa Mayer. So I think, you know, the feedback is, hey, it's better than nothing. Bring Marissa in. She's got some stuff. She's got some vision. She understands what the market is doing. She has some relevance, and, and that's important for Yahoo. She's got her work cut out for her. Uh, Yahoo's brand suffering from somewhat of a talent drain, and there have been years of chaos on its board and in its upper ranks. Its second quarter results were grim, and Yahoo's stock price is about half of it, what it was five years ago. So what does she need to do to turn the brand around? Uh, well, first of all, Yahoo has a good brand for people that are my age, basically. If you're under the age of 30, you probably don't even never heard of Yahoo. And that's really their core issue, right? Yahoo has a really longstanding brand equity in the older web, Web 1.0. They have really almost no equity, but their user base is so massive. So, you know, this is a, a consumer bubble that we're living in. You're seeing Twitter, you're seeing Facebook, you're seeing startups. There's uh, commentary all around Silicon Valley around the struggles of, you know, the, the older companies like Juniper Networks and, and the uh, startups as well is just struggling in the consumer place. So the land grab for the new consumer is still up for grabs. Yahoo obviously has a, a stake in that game. Facebook past 1 billion users. So out of nowhere, Facebook went from nothing to a billion users. And, you know, Yahoo could have bought uh, Facebook for a billion, billion dollars or 700 million around that number years ago. So Yahoo does have the users. They can convert those users into social users and quickly. If that's the goal of Yahoo to do that, I think that's the best play. And they do have the capability to do that. They do got to get some product leadership and they got to up their game a bit on that that part. So let's talk about her first several weeks in office. Uh, she's hired some new people, a new CFO, a new chief, uh, a marketing chief, a new head of human resources, and a publicist. She's also fired some others. Uh, she freed up $3 billion in cash from the sale of part of Yahoo's stake in the China-based e-commerce site Alibaba. Yahoo investors are urging Mayor to buy back shares rather than pay a dividend from that deal. Analysts have predicted that with a buyback, Yahoo's stock can double to $32 within a year. In what other areas would a buyback help Yahoo? Well, two things you mentioned there. One is the, you know, the hiring new people and the buyback. Let's take those two separately. One, on the hiring new people, absolutely critical path for Marissa is to bring in quality people. When you have companies like uh, Yahoo, and you know we saw this last week with Juniper when we reported, which we you know we'll, we'll talk about that later. When you have people that are not of high quality in positions, you know it's toxic, right? So what you have at Yahoo is very similar to some of the situations we've been seeing, and we'll be reporting lately on other companies in the Valley where you have legacy people who just are toxic and aren't good people. And what you want to do is you want to get rid of those people and bring in new people. So let them resign, let them move out. Marissa's got to bring in new high quality people, people who can operate at a high level, who aren't going to sit on their, their butts and really kind of reshape the company and move them in the right direction fast on the product leadership side. So that's the culture. 
The second thing on the buyback is interesting because what that is is they have the ability now with the cash windfall from the, the sale uh, to, to the Chinese is to use that to buy back the stock to control the flow. So that's an economic game around controlling the share price. And it also sends a signal to the stock market that they have confidence in the company. So two things going on there. They need to use that cash, not to essentially do a dividend or anything like that, but to reinvest in the company. And that's going to come in three areas. One, the culture I mentioned. Two, the product leadership and technology that we talked about earlier. And three, confidence in the overall economics and the mechanics of the, the stock. Yahoo has said it will return proceeds from the Alibaba transaction to investors without specifying how or when. Uh, how significant of a decision will this be viewed for Mayor, whether to keep the company's best interests on the agenda or to appease the shareholders? Look, at the shareholders, absolutely, if they take the money off the table, all of it, that's really greedy. I think that's a wrong move uh, from my, my personal opinion standpoint. That is not what the company needs. What the company should do is reinvest all of that money, if not 90% of it, into the operations of the company to bring back the culture, product, leadership, and also fix up the mechanics of how they operate their business. Because ultimately, in that, in that business, with those kinds of users, operating cash flow is priority number one for Yahoo. And they got to do that. And they have big Hadoop systems. They have some tech. And they got to amp up in other areas where they don't have the technology. So to me, if the stockholders demand that cash back, it's a, it's a, it's a tragedy and it's just total greed. And it speaks to the whole Wall Street mentality of the whole corporate, uh, corporate politics around the boardroom, uh, politics and Jerry Yang. And then you have the other CEO. All those games are done by hedge funds and these big companies to get cash out of the deal. So I think Marissa can give them some token cash and say, here, look, at, here's a nice pop on your investment. Take that cash. But if they want to be serious for Yahoo in the long run, they got to reinvest that cash. So if you look at their move, it'll be ultimately a tell sign for what the Yahoo of the future will be. If they give the cash back to the investors, then it's a total fail at that point. You might as well just, you know, don't buy the stock, sell it in short and, and run for the hills. If they reinvest it in the company, that's a sign of leadership. And that's what I think Marissa Mayer will do. We've been talking about the corporate governance of Yahoo. Let's switch gears for a minute and talk a little bit about the corporate governance of another Valley company, HP. Uh, analysts are saying that HP should break itself up and separate its division that sells printers and PCs from the one that caters to businesses. Do you think that's a good idea or is that just a recipe for channel sales destruction? You know, this is a good segue from that last comment because, honestly, I'm from the East Coast, so I totally understand the whole Wall Street mentality. I think it's a total failure to do that at this point. I think, you know, Meg Whitman's playing her car. I was like, oh, I took over this ship and it sucks and, and whatnot. But the bottom line is, is that she's overplaying her hand there. It's not as bad as she's saying. She's setting the expectations low. And I don't blame her for that. I think it's a good move. I've commented on that. But to break the company up is a, is a disaster. I'll tell you why. The enterprise business just doesn't have enough legs by itself to make it a, a really durable business. So they want to do a turnaround to the to the levels of, say, what IBM did. Yeah, maybe shed some operating units that have no gross margin. I could buy that. But even then, if it's generating revenue and it has the channels and it has the leverage from an operation standpoint, HP should keep it. And uh, like I've said in the past, you know, having these operating divisions around could provide new sales channels for new products that haven't even been invented yet. So remember, the laser jet the product that saved the company in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, was, wasn't even supposed to be built by HP. I mean, they were in the laser business, laser printer business, making $60,000 laser printers. But what people don't understand is the laser printer was a rogue project run out of Boise, Idaho, and uh, supplied by Canon. That one product that was a rogue, kind of a shadow, uh, shadow development project, saved, literally saved the company. HP needs more of those not less. So cutting and bludgeoning and splitting up divisions is not the kind of leadership Meg Whitman needs to do. What she needs to do is consolidate and grow, create that potential energy, create new R&D and have develop breakthrough products because they have the customer base, they have the supply chain, they have the channel. So what she does operationally will define what that company is. And it's a sign of breakups and division cutting. That's just corporate you know, Wall Street level type playing play, and that's not going to be good for the company. One more quick note from the Valley. We saw the best headline out on gizmodo.com. Uh, the headline stated, oh God, Bravo's Silicon Valley show looks even worse than we thought. Uh, have you seen any of this reality show promo yet? 
Yeah, I've seen it. I've been following that story from the beginning. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, either way, first of all, I think the show is going to be horrible, but I think it's going to surprise people because, one, I'm going to watch every episode because uh, I know some of the people in there, at least I know one person, um, uh, one of the videographers that we used to work with back in my last start at PodTech. But, um, you know, this really is ultimately a weird deal because uh, one tweet by Chris Tolles, ex-Netscape executive, now runs uh, Topex CEO, he says, this is Hollywood's answer to SOPA. Uh, meaning, you know, payback. This totally not a representation of Silicon Valley. There's no Asians in there. There's no Indian character. Um, it makes it be more glamorous than it really is. And we saw the failure of um, Gawker Media's uh, Valley Wag. It's just a testament to the fact that Silicon Valley is boring. It's a, it's it's you know, it's an innovation hub and it's sexy, and they're going to try to sexy it up a little bit. Um, but it's going to be fun to watch. And again, like I said on my Twitter account, it's better than watching, you know, uh, storage wars and parking wars on Bravo. So, you know, it's good to see Silicon Valley come back and we're going to see how the young people react to it. Will they have the digital IQ? I think they will. I think that'll align with people. If keeping up with the Kardashians can get the ratings, then I think, you know, Bravo might have a chance to do something with the Silicon Valley story. But it's totally not representative of Silicon Valley at all. Well, John, thanks so much for joining us. Great to have you on, as always. Great. For information on news of the day and the latest breaking analysis, stay tuned to News Desk right here on SiliconANGLE TV.